The Knicks Post Game Show is presented by Tri-State Audi. Visit your Tri-State area Audi dealer today. What a game tonight at MSG in the overtime. Jalen Brunson had six of his 27. Julius Randle, a couple of huge buckets down the stretch. Here he puts the Knicks up 132 to 129. The former Nick, Dennis Smith Jr. played well, 14 points, 10 assists. A miss there, an intentional miss as the Knicks were able to hold on. 134 to 131 in OT. They sweep the home stand, 3-0 in the last three at home and now 3-1 on the season. Great to have you with us from our Delta MSG studios. Bill Pito along with Alan Hahn and Wally Zerbiak. Julius Randle is going to join us here in a couple of moments. But guys, all the talk, Alan, about the acquisition of Jalen Brunson. What would it mean for this team when these games were on the line and he and the team came through tonight? Execution, you know, when it matters most. Those last three minutes of the game as well, getting the execution you needed to because the defense is still uh, early season defense right now as Charlotte was able to really spread the Knicks out and go against them one-on-one, -on -one. got into the paint a ton. But the Knicks also got into the paint a ton. In fact, 74 points in the paint tonight. So a lot of work done in the paint. And when they needed big buckets, that's where they went to get them. Yeah, the, uh, the way they operated at the end of the game, it looks like a totally different team than last year. It's all Jalen Brunson organizing the team, you know, keeping the ball in his hands, probing until he finds something for himself, or he feels like he's comfortable getting someone else the ball where they can do something with it. That's going to be a scoring-type, aggressive-type move to the basket. It was fun to watch that team execute down the stretch in that fourth quarter and in overtime. I thought they did a really good job of it. This team has to get, like you said, a little bit better on the defensive end of the floor especially to secure these games they could have secured this one away in the fourth quarter earlier if they could have gotten a few more stops mm. Knicks led by 12 a couple of times could never Wally extend the lead and right. they ended up the Knicks down five with 222 to go in regulation you're thinking well if this were last year they're not coming back right but they did come back and they were able to force overtime. And they came back because of Jalen Brunson. I mean, he made some huge shots in that fourth quarter. He just took over that game in crunch time, made a big step back three. Just sloppy ball handling there by Cam Reddish. And then McDaniels out in transition, the miss. Thor with that put back. These Hornets, I'll tell you, they got some serious bench production. Their bench came in. They played tremendous. They're a little undermanned, but they have played with no fear. They are very, very well coached. Steve Clifford is a tremendous coach. Look at the shots they're getting in the fourth quarter to get these wide open looks. Knicks have to secure a better defense. There's R.J. Barrett attacking. I give the Knicks credit, though. They never backed down. They never looked scared. They never looked timid. When the momentum swung and they got down by five points, I wanted to see what this team had in them. And they had this guy right here, Jalen Brunson. This was a monster, monster shot. I mean, they needed that three. He nailed that three. That was a huge one. You could see his dad over there cheering him up, cheering him off. On, How about then, a rebound? This, that's it, this overtime, was a big that was time huge. Rebound. That was big. This rebound, big time rebound, no doubt about that. Yeah, that was big time. As you mentioned, like this is a good stop here. We talked about defense, but this was a critical stop. You know, the score is tied. That's They're going win. for the win, end of regulation, and you see the closeouts, the hustle, and everything that they had to do to stop P.J. Washington, who was on fire in this game, from getting a clean look. And then Hayward had to shoot it really high over Mitchell Robinson, who had six blocks in this game. So when they needed defense, they got it. All right, on to overtime. Mm, yes. P.J. Washington. <laughs> Oh, so close to tying the game with a three. Sneaker. And just kind of like the Kevin Durant play a couple yeah. in the playoffs, in the playoffs right? right. Yeah, two and, years uh, ago. Now, now, if you think about it, too, it it's also depends on what shoe you pick out. So you pick out a shoe with blue at the base, <laughs> and the blue matched the blue line of the three-point line. If it wasn't for that, maybe that shoe was white at the bottom. Who knows? But overtime, more Jalen Brunson. Look at this. So comfortable from three. Wally, were you aware that he is actually a very good three-point shooter? Outstanding. Because nobody talks about that with his game. And this play. Yeah. Maybe we'll see this at the Wally Wall. A oh, beautiful pass to Mitchell Robinson. Going one-on-one -on -one with Dennis Smith Jr. As we mentioned, getting into the paint. Paint points. The smallest guy on the court getting into the paint. Yep. And, and, you know, this here. This is a crafty <laughs> play. Mitchell Robinson just hesitated for a little yeah. bit. Big bucket by Oubre. Close game. I love that this was basket. a monster move. I love this basket by Just Randall. Just beast mode there go, right boys. there. There it is. Yeah. Down, uh, Knicks up three. They thought they tied the game, but his foot was on the line. Then the Knicks go on to secure it with a stop, and they get that last nice little lead. All right, so the Knicks win 134-131, shooting 53.6% from the floor. Allen mentioned the points in the paint. 
Jalen Brunson went for 27 and a career-high 13, and Julius Randle had 17 points in the Knicks OT win. And we're now joined by Julius Randle. Hey, Julius, congratulations on a great win. Tell us about your guys' ability to execute down the stretch and in overtime. He had 12 points in the five-minute extra session, 12 points as a team. Yeah, um, I think it was just uh, late game execution. Uh, JB coming off pick and rolls, making great plays. Um, offensive rebounds, you know, Mitch hit the glass. Um, he was great. And then our ability to, uh, to be able to get stops when we need it. Julius, I saw a couple of big baskets late by you. The one offensive rebound where you put it back up, and that was a huge play at that point late in regulation. And then in overtime, that drive to the basket to finish strong as well. This was a game of getting into the paint and getting buckets. How important was that to make sure you could finish at the rim at that moment? Uh, very important. You know, um, I left a couple chippies out there on the board, obviously, but uh, tried to make them when they counted. And, uh, you know, we're a big uh, getting the paint team, either finish at the rim or, you know, spray and look for others. So, um, you know, we did a great job of that uh, for the most part today. Julius, I'm seeing great cohesion with the starting five. How have you guys been able to come together so quickly with Jalen Brunson as the new point guard? Uh, it's been great. You know, we just um, really just try to play unselfish, play for each other, um, you know, play fast, obviously. Um, we know that if we get stops and we get out in transition, we're pretty good. So, uh, sorry, we try to do that. And then, uh, you know, JB gets us into great sets. Uh, he knows how to, you know, get people the ball at the right time. Um, and then look to be aggressive, uh, you know, when it's his turn. So uh, it's great, man. <laughs> All smiles, Julius. Thanks so much for joining us, and good luck at Milwaukee on Friday. Thank you. Tell you what, balance on offense, again, has been a theme all year. Tonight, Wally, six players in double figures, two more with nine, one more with eight. Brunson leading the way with 27. That's what you need. You need everyone to contribute when they get minutes on the floor. Jalen Brunson was the catalyst the whole entire game. Just controlling the game, just orchestrating the game. You feel so comfortable as a fan watching him just make decisions. He's such a great decision maker. Tom Thibodeau always talks about read and react, make the right read, make the right play. And what a performance. I mean, he broke his career high in assists, 13 assists. Hard to believe that that's his career high. He's going to blow through career highs in assists this year, I think, having the ball in his hands as much as he has in running this team. He just wasn't the primary ball handler back in his previous teams with the Dallas Mavericks. So this year, being the guy, he's going to get a ton of assists. But look at the shots he gets, mm. the decisions he more. makes. 10 out of 15 from the floor. Mm -hmm. High percentage because he takes good shots. He uses the pick and roll to his advantage. He gets into the paint, takes advantage of his size. He's always balanced when he shoots. He doesn't drive in there and try to shoot over the trees and take bad shots attacking the basket all the time. He takes the shots he knows he can make. And mid-range is tremendous also mm -hmm. the mid-range even though everyone says shoot threes get pain points no 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 no. if you're a smart player you know when you can get to your spot in the mid-range it's like shooting 70 percent from the field when you can get that look at the basket and that's what he did tonight he gets those high percentage shots and he's also when it matters like he's such a confident player he, he's that guy that that does Definitely. believe late in the game i can make this shot and when you have a player like that on your team and some of the better teams have two guys on their team like that. But when you have a guy like that, late in game like we just saw, close games like this, you have execution, you have makers. And he's become that guy that trusts himself and all the work that he's put in that knows big shots, walking up and knocking down a three-pointer. In that moment, you needed that shot. He knocked it down. How great is his footwork? It's tremendous. Right? So fundamentally sound. So He gets sound. to his spot, creates Everything space. He's Never done. off balance either. Right. And, and when you talk to him, he, he always will credit all the work he put in with his dad, with, yes. with Rick. And he always mentioned that. I, I, everything I learned, my nine out of ten things I learned from Rick. But it's, it's when you watch him right now, on, uh, you know, in the beginning of his Knicks career, you see somebody that's been, this has been, he's been doing this his whole life, getting ready for this moment where he was given a team. You are the point guard. You're the leader. In Dallas, he wasn't. It was Luka's team. He did a lot to help them and get them as far as they got. But it was Luka's team. This is the first time in his career, even at Villanova, where this is his team, and he can feel it, and he's ready for it. It was his team at Villanova. Well, you, he was national player. They had a lot of stars team. on that, that obviously helped him. This is his team. Don't mess with him on college basketball. <laughs> Don't mess with me with knowledge on players on this oh, team. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. Oh. <laughs>